Hey there, movie enthusiasts. Today, we're delving into a classic flick from 1972 that's sure to get your heart racing. It's a tale filled with action, humor, shockers, and moments that'll tug at your heartstrings. As we unravel the story, you'll be on the edge of your seat, eager to uncover all the twists and turns. But here's the deal, we're not just here to spill the beans. We wanna hear about your personal connections to this cinematic gem. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We're all ears. So, what makes this movie stand out over time? Is it the gripping storyline, the outstanding performances, or something else entirely? Let us know your thoughts. Get ready for a roller coaster ride of emotions and stay tuned for more fascinating facts. It's about to get interesting. And with that, it's time to hit play and let the journey begin. Keep watching for those juicy details and don't forget to share your tales with us. Your voice matters. In comparison to director Sam Peckinpah's other works from the same period, such as The Wild Bunch, Straw Dogs, and Pat Garrett, and Billy the Kid, The Getaway Falls Short. While it may have been adapted from cult crime writer Jim Thompson's material, the film struggles to find its footing initially. The plot follows a husband and wife heist team on the run, but it takes time to gain momentum on screen. Despite occasional interesting moments and a solid supporting cast, the overall execution lacks Peckinpah's usual brilliance. Macra and McQueen, often dubbed as the Bogey and Buck Hall of the 70s, failed to elevate the film with their performances. McQueen's decision to edit the film himself is questionable, and Macra's portrayal falls flat, lacking chemistry with her co-star. However, as the narrative progresses, particularly with the subplot involving a thug, Sally Struthers' character, and her veterinarian husband, the film becomes more engaging. Despite its flaws, The Getaway manages to conclude satisfactorily, offering some entertainment value, especially for fans of the stars and the director. Overall, it's worth a watch, particularly for its historical context, and as a testament to Peckinpah's versatility as a filmmaker. Impressed by his acting in another film, Walter Hill recommended Richard Bright for a role in a certain movie. Bright had previously collaborated with a well-known actor, but didn't quite match the physical image the actor had in mind for the character. Nevertheless, the director cast him as a con man at a train station. This actor, closely linked with Triumph Motorcycles, proposed a scene where his character shoots and blows up a police car. The actor's affinity for Triumph Bikes goes back to a movie in the 60s where he rode his 650cc TR6 trophy. He even paid a visit to Triumph's factory for motorcycle preparations. The idea to include a scene where his character blows up a squad car originated from the actor himself, who had a strong connection to Triumph Motorcycles. He rode the same model in a movie from the 60s and participated in a motorcycle event in East Germany. Photos of his desert racing adventures also feature him on this particular model. Additionally, he visited Triumph's factory for motorcycle collection and preparation on multiple occasions. Impressed by his performance in a previous project, a filmmaker recommended Richard Bright for a role in a certain film. Bright had collaborated with a well-known actor before, but didn't quite match the physical image the actor had in mind for the character. Nevertheless, the director cast him as a con man at a train station. This actor, closely linked with a popular motorcycle brand, proposed a scene where his character shoots and blows up a police car. The actor's affinity for the motorcycles goes back to a movie in the 60s where he rode a specific model. He even paid a visit to the motorcycle company's factory for preparations. The idea to include a scene where his character blows up a squad car originated from the actor himself, who had a strong connection to the motorcycles. He rode the same model in a movie from the 60s and participated in a motorcycle event in a different country. Photos of his desert racing adventures also feature him on this particular model. Additionally, he visited the motorcycle company's factory for motorcycle collection and preparation on multiple occasions. Steve McQueen, known for his roles in action films, had plans to retire after filming The Towering Inferno in 1974. However, his career took an unexpected turn with The Getaway in 1972, leading him to reconsider his retirement. Holly Mackraw, who starred alongside McQueen in the film, faced personal struggles. Always uneasy in front of the camera, Macross discomfort escalated during the filming of Convoy in 1978. On one particular day, she arrived on set under the influence of cocaine and tequila prompting her to quit drugs after the incident. Interestingly, McQueen's path in the industry was marked by a notable decision. He declined a substantial $4 million offer to star in The Gauntlet in 1977. The 
The initial plan involved Barbara Streisand as the lead with Sam Peckinpah directing. However, McQueen and Streisand clashed due to egos and political differences, leading to McQueen turning down the offer. Clint Eastwood later took over as director, casting himself and Sandra Locke in the lead roles. These behind-the-scenes incidents shed light on the challenges and dynamics within the film industry during the era, impacting the careers of both McQueen and Macro. In the world of filmmaking, there are moments where magic happens behind the scenes, shaping the essence of a movie. One such instance occurred during the creation of a gritty action-packed film set in a prison. The director, known for his bold style, orchestrated scenes that immersed the lead actor in the midst of real convicts, capturing the raw essence of the setting. In this intense atmosphere, unexpected actions and genuine reactions unfolded, adding a layer of authenticity to the movie. Amidst the unfolding drama, a subtle detail, a gift from a colleague added personal significance to one of the characters, mirroring the depth of emotions explored in the film. Beyond set dynamics, fueled by unscripted moments, and the chemistry between the actors breathe life into the characters, creating a movie resonating with authenticity and depth. It's these nuances shaped by the director's vision and the actor's performances that contribute to the timeless allure of this cinematic gem. In a pivotal scene, a stuntman performed the role from the car after Bo Hopkins' character was shot. An extra then portrayed Hopkins' body on the pavement as police cars approached, witnessed by onlookers. Steve McQueen, known for his prowess with props, particularly the weapons he handled in the film, declined a role in the sequel to The Towering Inferno in 1977. Director Walter Hill noted McQueen's brisk and confident handling of guns, attributing it to his military training. McQueen's adeptness with props added authenticity to his portrayal, enhancing the film's realism. The Getaway, a 1972 film, continues to captivate audiences with its gritty action and McQueen's memorable performance. Amidst budgetary conflicts, The Getaway faced a pivotal moment when Paramount threatened exclusive rights. David Foster, tasked with securing a deal, found solace in First Artist Group's offer. The Gamble Steve McQueen's deferred salary 10% of box office earnings hinged on the film's success. Meanwhile, McQueen's journey to stardom began with director Robert Wise's dismissive remark, branding him a mere kook in a beanie after their initial encounter. Behind the scenes, director Sam Peckinpah's reliance on alcohol grew, quipping, I can't direct when I'm sober. In The Getaway, Steve McQueen stars alongside Charles Bronson and James Coburn, having previously collaborated with them in films directed by John Sturges. Notably, McQueen and Bronson appeared in three Sturges directed films together, including Never So Few, The Magnificent Seven, and The Great Escape. Additionally, McQueen shared the screen with James Coburn in the latter two Sturges films mentioned. Ben Johnson, known for his role in The Getaway, hailed from a family of champion steer ropers. Both he and his father, Ben Johnson III, were honored with inductions into the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Johnson Jr. received this recognition in 1982, while his father was inducted in 1961. Furthermore, Ben Johnson appeared in two films nominated for the Best Picture Oscar Shane and The Last Picture Show, 